In this tutorial, I will be going over how I process NGC 1300, starting with downloading the files from the Hubble Legacy Archive. By typing in NGC 1300 and searching, I get about 45 results. So I'm going to just scroll until I find the complete galaxy. While there are many beautiful images of NGC 1300, they are not complete. But here there is an entire complete set of the full galaxy in the image. This was taken with the advanced camera for surveys, so it's a newer image. And here we have 435, 555, 658, and 814. So we have a complete set that can be processed for red, green, and blue and an added luminosity layer. 435 will be assigned to blue, 555 to green, 658 will be a hydrogen alpha luminosity layer, and 814 will be red. You can download them by clicking the FITS Science link and adding it to your cart, or if you are using Google Chrome, you can just right click, select Open Link in New Tab, and it will automatically begin downloading. That is just a faster way that I have found to download than adding it to my cart and downloading it later. Once it is done downloading, make sure to convert it from a FITS file into a TIFF file using the FITS Liberator. A quick Google search of FITS Liberator will bring you to the ESA ESO NASA FITS Liberator 3 page. However, there is now an update for FITS Liberator that came out on March 4th, 2021, FITS Liberator 4. FITS Liberator 4 looks a lot different than FITS Liberator 3 and has some new features. It now supports 64-bit operating systems. It's easy to install on Windows, Mac, and Linux. It has a dark mode, full screen support, and many other cool features. So let's check it out. You can immediately see that the layout looks a lot different than FITS Liberator 3. If you want to open an image, you can either click right here on the image in the center or select Open FITS File. The same selections in previous versions are still here to mark your white clipping, your black clipping, and to flip the image. However, the scaling for these images is now different. Linear, A sine of H, and POW, which I do not know what that stands for. I have found by messing around with these that A sine H seems to have the best range to scale your image. You can adjust the black levels and the white levels down here with the black level and the white level. Just drag them to where you would like them to be. In order to save this image, select Save. Make sure that the bit depth is selected as 16-bit. When you are done, open up Photoshop, then go to File scripts, and load files into stack. I will only be loading the blue, green, and red channels first. The H-alpha luminosity layer will be added later. I first begin by renaming my images to the colors that I would like to make them. Then I will unselect the eye in order to see individual layers, select the bottom layer for red, and do some stretching before I color it. Do the same for the green under Image, Adjustments, and Levels. And the same for the blue. Then select Image, Mode, RGB Color in order to colorize the layers. 
Then select each layer and convert it to a smart object. Do the same for the green by right clicking after selecting the layer and choosing convert to smart object. And do the same for the red layer. I will colorize these layers with the quick method of just selecting the layer itself by double clicking and under advanced blending. For red, I unselect green and blue and leave red checked. We'll do the same for the green layer and the blue layer. Photoshop will automatically blend these layers together. However, I will also make sure that the first two layers are on Lighten. Lighten is the best blending mode for blending colorized layers in Photoshop. The bottom layer can remain as a normal blend. Next, flatten the image. And from here, create a new layer. Then go to File, Open, and choose the H-Alpha Luminosity layer. Then go to Image, Adjustments, and Levels to adjust the levels before we paste it onto the other image. Then using Control A and Control C, select the image and using Control V, paste it onto the stack. Layer one is simply a placeholder so that Photoshop does not paste it directly onto the background. This layer can be deleted. I will rename my layer and using the same colorization method, double click unselect green and blue, and keep it at red. Photoshop will automatically blend these two images together. You can change the blending mode and keep it at luminosity, or select lighten. Screen can also work as well, as long as you adjust the red levels. But choose whichever one you think looks the best. All of these different colors that show up, where screen looks more red or luminosity looks more green, can be processed out. In this case, I will use the Lighten Blend method. Once again, flatten the image. The image is now ready to be processed further. The first step I will do next is to create a new layer. Then choosing the eyedropper tool, right clicking and choosing color sampler. This will allow me to set my black threshold point. Over here, the red, green and blue levels will be visible. I prefer to choose a point that is more close to each other. So you may erase and choose a new point until you find one that is relatively close. From here, I even out the levels. I will bring the blue up just slightly to make them even for processing. And then create a new layer. And I will crop this image before I continue processing using the perspective crop tool. I will cut out the area of the image that I would like. Using the rectangular marquee tool, I will then trim the sides where I can see the black, which probably does not look super visible in this video here, but there's a bit of the black outline from my crop. So using the rectangular marquee and then going to image crop, I can crop the edges that aren't quite what I want.
From here I will create a new layer, then go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and Selective Color. From here I will adjust the colors in the image just by messing around with the sliders and seeing what works and what doesn't look good. For instance, if I want to enhance the red, I can add the magenta, add some yellow to create a deeper red in the hydrogen alpha luminosity areas, and then any color on this list can be processed as well. The hydrogen alpha luminosity layer enhances these red hydrogen alpha areas where there are gaseous nebula. Creating a new layer, my next step would be to use the camera raw filter. That is under filter, camera raw filter. This is a setup that is very similar to Lightroom, and so if you have an older version of Photoshop and cannot use camera raw filter, if you do have access to Lightroom, it is basically the same layout. From here I can then adjust everything, temperature, tint, exposure, contrast. I just mess around with these settings to get the image to where I like it. I usually stick to the basic tab, but you can also go down here for a bunch more options. If the image needs noise reduction, you can go to Filter, Noise, and choose any of these options to remove noise in the image. I found that Hubble data does not usually have a lot of noise. Sometimes the older images do, but the newer images are nice and clean. In this image, however, you can see that here, although it is very faint, there is a line through the image, most likely from the chip gap from the ACS camera. So reducing color noise will help process out that line. That is how I would process NGC 1300. Feel free to use whatever edits that you would normally use when processing your own images. There are many more options than what I show here. Especially under New Adjustment Layer, you can mess with brightness, contrast, vibrance, hue and saturation, and many other things. So just experiment and play around in Photoshop and find what looks good for your image.